916, it's the morning show with Jeff and Will on AM 1700 WRCR Haverstraw, WRCR.com. Welcome back, everyone. For the next 14 minutes or so, we will have a great conversation with Tina Traster of rcbizjournal.com. Good morning, Tina. Good morning, Jeff. That's how are you? Right. I'm doing well. How are you? Did you think I didn't know? <laughs> well, you kind of hesitated before you said Jeff, and so it made me think Hesitation. that you didn't. <laughs> so it made me think. Want- there, we, we do get we do get a lot of people who call us up and say, "Oh, I thought that was Will," or "Oh, I thought that was Jeff." Like the way we, like we sound the same. We do get that a lot. I know, I know. That's why I had that that you know millisecond of hesitation. And but, uh, that's why I called you out on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You for that. You're welcome. So, but, yes. Before I launch into today's agenda, I uh, just wanted to ask: Is there anything you guys want to discuss? I, I know normally I come with a whole agenda, but anything on your mind? Anything going on that you think bears conversation? What's on my mind? Um, what is on my mind? Anything? Well, nothing business related specifically. I am concerned, though, about. Um, uh, the shape of Route 59 in general and how that not only affects the, the traffic and the flooding and the weather, but that does incur, uh, involve business as well. I mean, the route, generally speaking, the Route 59 corridor is, is business for the most part. Um, but uh, Route 59 is wildly different from one end of the county to the next. Um, what do you recommend, if anything, can be done from the east to west main road that splits uh, Rockland County, uh, north and south. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny because because uh, I was talking about that over the weekend. Um, it really is a critical issue. Um, it is yes, it's a it's a state road, um, but we live here locally. Um, you are right that it is it is essentially the the key business artery uh, that runs through the county. Um, I live close enough to the area of 59 that is that floods um, and that gets shut down and, uh, you know, uh, clogs traffic and reroutes traffic. Um, I think uh, that there's a major problem here. Um, I know that there was some press conference amongst the public officials, I guess, demanding some attention from the state. Uh, but since we know that, that you know, State government works very, very, very slow. You know, I I was thinking back. So I'm here 20 years. uh, And as I said, I live very close to 59. And it's it's never been different. It's only gotten worse. So what is it going to take? Um, Well, you know, that's an interesting way for me to segue into something I was going to talk about today. And I think that the answer is a concerted effort um, from the business community to let it be known in Albany that that a broken Route 59 is a broken economic system, um, and and I think that that it needs advocacy. You know, not just public officials holding a press conference uh, to you know kind of to make them look like they're doing something, but a real push uh, from the business community. Um, you know, who are who are the constituents um, of, of this uh, of this county and of the state now. That is actually an interesting segue to talk about something that we reported on last week. Oh, unless you have any thoughts about what I said. Uh, no, I would, I'm, I'm eager to hear how this segues into something else, because I know we've talked about Roof 89 quite a bit. And like you said, it's just because a bunch of uh, politicians held a press conference doesn't mean the Roof 59 is going to be fixed tomorrow. It requires a very diligent overhaul, and that requires a lot of study and, and figuring out. But, but it's good that they get it at least on their radar if that worked. I think it requires pressure. I think it it requires a a concerted campaign. And so what I was going to talk about, what I was going to segue to, is um, we we put up a story about a a fairly newly formed organization up in Oldest. Now, this is Ulster County, but we wrote about this because it's it's a template. Uh, They they organized um, an organization called Ulster Strong. And it is a division of the Hudson Valley Economic Development Corporation, um, whose main, um, you know, topic of, of focus is economic development. And this is an organization that is a hyper-local group of business people who, um, it's different than a chamber of commerce. Um, it's different than a sort of broad, I guess, business association. 
or trade association. This is this is an interesting template <clears throat> of a group of business leaders who are looking at the the desire for um, smart growth. Who realize that um, there is certain development, not all, but certain development that makes economic sense, and that oftentimes it's just the opposition that comes forward, that's organized, that that is is activated, <clears throat> and that sometimes it's the business community that has to put its strength um, and efforts behind an issue and educate themselves and educate the planning board or zoning board um, <clears throat> and the public at large about the benefits of a particular project. Um, <clears throat> the group, it started with the group's interest in a project that lingered for years and years. You may be familiar with it. We've written about it. It's called the Kingstonian. Um, and it, it's a proposal for the um, uh, uptown Kingston. I don't know if you've been to, to that part of Kingston, but it's really it's really come a, a long way. It's really hip. It's really fun. Um, lots of restaurants, uh, hotels. And there's a 2.5 acre track that's basically been fallow for, for a long time at the edge of, of uh, uptown. And there's been a developer at the table trying to <clears throat> do a, a multi-use development, which actually includes 142 residential units with a 10% allocation for affordable workforce housing, something we can't seem to get here. Um, and, a, and another uh, boutique hotel, which, again, is a great economic driver. So the point is, is that um, a group started to educate itself about the proposal and go to the planning board and make it and have a voice at the table. And that's what I'm really talking about here with, with Route 59. It, it's, it's an issue for all of us. It's, it, it's a hassle. It's an inconvenience. It's a safety issue. But it's also a business issue, as, as you rightly pointed out, and it is something that the business community here could rally around and, and actually use as, as a sort of first um, uh, target of, of organizing in a way where the business community has a voice um, that's not as fractured as whatever it is that the individual chambers uh, of commerce do. So Ulster Strong, take a look at the story. It sort of lays out how they how they formulated some of the things they did last year, um, who the players are behind it, and um, also they point out and we point out in, in the story, of course, that um, it is it, it is a, a template that that can be replicated, and uh, and and possibly should be certainly here in in Rockland County. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. What do you, what do you think of the 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 likelihood that it will be uh, brought here and applied locally? Well, <laughs> there are some conversations that that began. I was actually part of that initial conversation, so I know that um, the door has been opened uh, to some leaders here in in the county. It it takes it takes initiative. It, it takes um, you know enough people in the business community to say. That's a really good template. That's a really good idea. It's a really good way to have um, a voice at the table to to weigh in, um, to look at how to you know shape the county so it doesn't just become a you know continuous place of, of you know warehousing and senior development. You know, uh, sort of one one ecosystem over another. Um, I, I I I hope that there that there that, that enough leadership can be mined and organized. Uh, to create something like this, I think it, it would be a great asset for this community. Um, I, I think that we're, I think we're weak on economic development, although others would say otherwise. But I think that we we don't have a cohesive plan. And I think what's interesting about their program is, you know, is, while this is replica can be replicated in a town or a village to the concept, I think having an organization that covers the entire county. Um, gives it more of a global, holistic, um, you know, uh, outlook. Um, and, and I think that that would be really strategic here in Rockland, which sometimes seem, seems to be, and Ulster's a big county, but here in Rockland we seem to be so, I don't know, you know, divided and, and limited to what's going on just very, very locally. I think the idea of a countywide organization really looking at future development, smart growth, um, and a healthy economic ecosystem, I think, would be 
very terrific. I'm holding so, I'm holding out hope that someday, someday yeah. we can have an elevated light rail that goes from Suffern to Nyack, but it resembles a, a like a an old fashioned San Francisco cable car that'll connect you to the train that brings you to Tarrytown and into Manhattan. What do you think? How can we have that happen? Um, I'm thinking we need George George Dent. <laughs> George Jetson? George Jetson? <laughs> well, we'll just have slide walks for, and we'll be have flying cars. I've been waiting for that for all my life. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I, you know, I think, I think it's when, when you look at, at the IRG, why, why that campus, the former Pfizer campus, is still empty. I, I think part of it is housing and part of it is transportation. We're missing, we're missing really key elements here in this county, um, you know, in, in order to stimulate a holistic, and, and I think, and that's why, you know, I, I think that's why the warehouse, it's like the fallback is warehousing, because, you know, that, and what is that going to do? It's just going to keep trucks coming through the county, which will exacerbate Route 59 and every other road. Um, yeah, I, I think we don't have a holistic mechanism that's really looking at economic development here in the county um, very, you know, smartly, um, and, and I think that we're, we're, we're definitely in need of that. Two other quick things just to mention is, um, you know, NIAC had declared a rental emergency and opted into something called the <clears throat> Emergency Tenant Protection Act, and they had passed that, that back in, in late December. Uh, this allows for rent controls in buildings built before uh, 1974 of at least six units to be, to be rent controlled. And uh, recently, um, they... I don't know, they had to go back to the drawing board and, and redo their study. So uh, something that um, looked like it was moving forward and looked uh, progressive uh, seems to have hit a, hit a bump in the road. And like I said, they need to go back and do a new what's called a vacancy survey to justify uh, being able to, to declare uh, this, this, emer this um, emergency, 10 emergency. Um, and also, just uh, to sign off on uh, speaking about going back to the drawing board, um, the week uh, before last, a Rockland County Supreme Court tossed the village of New Hampshire's comprehensive plan, uh, its zoning amendments, and its village zoning map, three years of work, and sent it back to the village uh, for a redo. Uh, and it seems that the village had neglected, this is really important, um, this just seems like inside business, but it really isn't. The village had neglected to comply with several state laws when it passed its comprehensive plan, including complying with something called SECA, which uh, monitors in environmental issues, and it neglected to comply with the general municipal law, which required the village to allow the county planning department to review the plan and its input. So I, I think everything that we're talking about today is all part of the same thing. You know, which is which is looking at the future of Rockland County um, and and trying to do the right things as we're at this very pivotal moment. Um, organization, education. You know, maybe this is what it will take to um, get Route 59 fixed, as opposed to, as you say, Jeff, um, officials holding a press conference. And we will see. Hopefully that uh, that does get done, and hopefully sooner rather than later, and, and certainly within our lifetimes. Thank you so much, yeah. Tina. Thank you so much, Tina, for joining us as always. We'll talk to you again next week. That's Tina Traster of rcbizjournal.com. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you again next week. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. You too.